My biggest fear would be when the first comes and I don't get the rent. I found that my tenant had dumped concrete down my toilet. Can you believe Fair Housing fined me $5,000 for that? How do you onboard your tenants? What do you do? I don't even know if I do it right. If you're a landlord, don't just rent, rent perfect. The Rent Perfect Podcast with property expert and private investigator, David Pickron. Well, it's another episode of the Rent Perfect Podcast. I'm David Picker, I'm your host. Grateful to have Danny Dobbins here with us. Danny, I almost feel like you need to be my co-host. I lean on you a ton because of what is up in your head. If I could just get it and spill it all out to the Rent Nation, we would all be better landlords. And that's what we're trying to do as we have different guests come in about different topics. But a lot of this legal is just so important for especially the new landlord or maybe the landlord has one, two, three, up to 10 properties. Really not a place to go to get a lot of education. Uh, Usually you get your education through making mistakes. And so we're trying to cover topics where we're going to prevent our clients from making mistakes. Denny, attorney for a long time, HUD commissioner, police officer, private investigator. Is there anything you haven't done in your career? Yes, many things. Okay. <laughs> it's been a good one. So I certainly appreciate the time that you spend with us to share your your knowledge. Um, Denny, I know that you've represented thousands of units. You've gone to thousands and thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of cases. And a lot of those have been for non-payment of rent, which I, we would probably agree, fairly easy, didn't pay the rent, no big deal. Um, you know, hey, had a, had a pet in the home and wasn't supposed to have a pet in the home. But I noticed the ones that draw out a little bit that landlords get in trouble are these move in, move out inspections that they don't do right. And then they don't return the security deposit in the correct way. So I want to talk today about how do we take the security deposit, hold it and then release it at the right time. So we're not paying an attorney two, three, four thousand $4,000 to, you know, make it right to the tenant because he didn't get a security deposit back. Well, first of all, every state is a little different. And so every state's going to have a rule about security deposits. So every person listening to this podcast needs to find out from their own attorney, from their own association, what exactly the rule is for their state or for their area. But in general, I can go into things that are universal for landlords and for judges. This is an area, security deposits and the whole idea of the unit itself and the condition of the unit when the resident moves in and when the resident moves out, this is where landlords can get hammered in court. And they get hammered because they don't have the evidence to prove what they're trying to say. Because just the typical case that goes to trial is basically this. I sued the landlord because the landlord didn't return all of my security deposit. And in some states you're going to have penalties. You're going to have, they're going to get their security deposit back and they're going to get maybe up to two times as much of the security deposit as a penalty plus attorney's fees. And so they'll say, I moved out. He didn't return or she didn't return my security deposit within the time limit, or they didn't return the amount that I should have had coming to me. Or show me receipts where they spent the money or proved why they kept part of my security deposit. Right. Because even though it's the plaintiff's job to prove their case, they'll come in and lay it out and say, here's what it is. They didn't do it. Now the burden shifts back to the landlord to say, yes, I did. And here's my proof. Because what happens is the landlord many times doesn't have any proof what the condition of the property was before the residents moved in. All they have is the condition of the property when the residents moved out. And what does the resident say? I left that property in better condition when I left than when I moved in. Well, the landlord's stuck now, okay? If I don't have the proof, I'm going to wind up paying this resident. Right. So what does the landlord do? And over time, what I've taught landlords is that I know it's a pain, but remember, you're trying to protect yourself. It takes some time, but either the landlord has to do it or the manager has to do it. Someone has to do it. And so what I say, as soon as a resident moves out, before you touch that property, 
before you make any repairs, before you clean out the trash, you video that property. So you have evidence of the condition that that property was left in. Now, if you go to trial, you have business records and you have an actual video of the condition of the property, how it was left. Okay. Okay. So now after you clean up that property, you need to take another video. You need to show that it's in that pristine condition when that new resident comes in. I've actually had landlords who went in and took that video when the old resident left. Okay. New resident moves in. And the only video they have is the one that that was taken because the place was destroyed. They don't have the new one. Right. Showing the beautiful, pristine condition. Right. Because a video, you know, judges hear testimony all the time. But if they get to see a video, well, that's kind of fun. It kind of makes it different for the day, you know. And, and a picture says a thousand words. It does. Right. And the judge is now looking at the, the plane of saying, well, that looked pretty good condition there. And I see the countertop there when you moved in. And I also see the countertop when you left. That's got the holes in it and the marks in it. Right. I believe the landlord. I don't believe you. Well, I think where we make a lot of mistakes is when we get into any kind of new relationship. I mean, either in a marriage, a friendship, a business partnership. We never think that it can go wrong in the future. So we kind of relax. We kind of get lazy. And why do I need to video a uh, my unit when it's perfect in perfect condition? It's it looks good now, and and I don't realize in two, three, four, or five years what that is going to look like. And so, you know, we try not to use this podcast a ton promoting Rent Perfect. We try to really just educate in this podcast. But in the Rent Perfect app, we have the tenant go around when they move in and take pictures of everything, mark everything. We keep those pictures, and then when they move out, the landlord then on their app goes in, takes pictures of everything, and we have on the same app the before and afters, whether it's six months, one year, two years, or five years. And so what we call MIMO, move in, move out, in our system is really a slick program to use. Now, I put in a little plug and a little commercial, and I apologize for our listeners about that. Well, that, that goes to that, exactly what I'm saying. Right, that don't that don't use us, but it really is a neat part of our system. But if you don't use us, I think the key is, is you have to document your property two times before they move in and after they move out. I actually say four times and I'll tell you okay. why. Love it. You do the video, you do the pictures, but you also have a move out or move in, move out checklist. Okay. You want to go through, sometimes the video doesn't pick up everything. So you want to go through and you want to mark everything off, give the resident an opportunity not 10 days later. Right, when they moved in and banged up the walls with their furniture. Exactly. You right. want to you want to do it before you hand them the keys right. and say, here's the condition of the property. They sign off saying this is the condition of the property. Now they can't add anything on so that when they move out, you have that in written form as well as in photographic form. Right. And I think you also need to keep in, you know, just in your mind that, Everything has a shelf life. So you buy some carpet and say, you know, I've been accused sometimes of buying the cheapest carpet for some of my units that I just didn't want to put real expensive carpet in. And so I kind of went on a little cheaper side of things that maybe had a three to four to five year, you know, lifespan to it. And then when someone moves out five years later, I'm looking at the carpet going, this, this carpet's thrashed. It was not like this when you moved in. Well, the reality is, is there's wear and tear that we have to take. Yeah, it's depreciated out, yeah. Right, and so the judges look at that. Yes. Okay. So, is there anything other than maybe carpet flooring? Is there paint? Is there yard? Is there anything in and out of the the property that judges are really looking at that they would expect not to be in perfect condition after five years? Well, they would also be looking at the thing you just mentioned. What what is the timeline of anything like did they let's say they destroyed the refrigerator for whatever reason well how long does a refrigerator last when you go in and you do your itemization for the tenant for the security deposit return mm -hmm. you, you got to be realistic and you can't just try to make that a profit center you, you got and, and that's where we go wrong right or at least the bad landlords give this whole thing a bad rap yes is they try to make it a profit center and they try to keep it every single time. 
Exactly. You, you've got to look at it as any accountant would look at it and say, you know, this is what they really owe me. You know, they don't owe me a brand new fridge. Well, that fridge was 12 years old when I was put, when I put it in. And if they somehow destroyed it, well, was it a 15 year life for that fridge? Okay. So they owe me three years right. for the cost of the fridge. Denny, I, uh, I went into a property one time The people were, were leaving and they were going off to buy a house. Just a great couple lived there for about four years and uh, went to the property to kind of do my final inspe- walk through inspection with them, make sure everything was up to par so I can give them their full deposit back. And I open the front door and I look at this, uh, this unit and it's immaculate. I mean, it's perfect. After four years of wear and tear, I'm like, was anybody ever even living in? These guys did a fantastic job. And I was so impressed, and I don't recommend doing this to anybody, but I thought, you know what, for my just, and I actually had another tenant moving in the next day, and I was planning on being there all night fixing stuff. So I was thinking, they just made my night real easy. So, you know, I got out my checkbook book, and I just said, you know what, I'm giving your deposit back right on the spot, right here, which I would not recommend doing that. But for some reason that day, I felt like that was my appreciation for you taking care of my property. So I wrote a $1,200 check, deposit return. I handed it to him. I said, you know, thank you so much for taking care of this property. And he says, well, five years ago, you actually only made me pay you a $500 deposit. <laughs> <laughs> I would have never known. Uh, yeah. He could have took my $1,200 check what a great and guy. left yeah. because I wasn't carrying my lease in my folder. Yeah. It was back at my office, you know, in a manila folder in a filing cabinet. And uh, now what I like about having Rent Perfect and having all my leases on my phone and my phone app is I actually can look up all my leases from five, six years ago and know what decision did I make back then. I honestly still, and I'm getting old, don't ever remember only taking a $500 deposit. I must, it must have been a really good day for me uh, to do that. Or you got you know? some really good referrals on um, it. Yeah. But he gave me back the check, and I voided it, and I wrote him a check for $500. And that, that even said how, how good that tenant was, right? Those are the ones that we're looking for. Well, I was on the opposite side of that. Okay. You know, we've all rented it sometime in our lives. Right. Well, I was going to school, and we were renting an apartment, and... Um, it was great. It was beautiful. And we moved out and I, I went the extra mile cause I already knew, you know, landlord tenant law. Right. And I said, I'm going to make this pristine. And their, their Acadia door is all screwed up. I fixed it. When we moved, we had the carpets professionally cleaned. They looked incredible. I spent 200 bucks back in those days. That was a right. lot of money. Right. 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 But I wanted to have it beautiful for these people. And I think more just for our name, just for our right. family's name, that right. they don't look at us as deadbeats. Right. I want, I want them to know. It says that, a lot about you. I want them to know that we really cared about their property because at the time I was renting out my house. Right. And so I could live in that house because I was in Tucson. And uh, so two months later, I get served a complaint they they ne- they never gave me my security deposit back, and I was just waiting for it. Right. And I and I had called several times. So you're expecting a check in the mail, not a lawsuit. I was <laughs> expecting a check in the mail. They charged me four thousand dollars for carpet. They replaced the carpet. That carpet looked awesome. They charged me for um, doors and windows and paint. I'm like, I left that house. We never put up one nail in in any of those right. walls because we knew we were only going to be there for right. a little while. So, <clears throat> so you were rehabbing the place for them. We wanted it to be like we wanted our house left in Mesa. Right. We wanted it to be right. nice when we got back. But in the landlord's mind, they thought, "Hey, let's get this uh, let's get this tenant to rehab our place for us." Well, it was a twelve hundred dollar <laughs> deposit. Just happened to be the yeah. same number. So I went ahead and answered. And then we started doing a little bit of discovery. And I asked them for all kinds of documents, and they said, well, this is small claims, and you don't get any of that. I said, okay. So I went to small claims, and I presented the photographs I took when I left. They had nothing. 
the judge admonished them that if you're going to be in the business of landlording, that you need to change your ways. You can't do this to people. And so he, I didn't have an attorney, so he just gave me the costs that I had incurred. And if I remember, I think he gave me some gas money, which was kind of interesting. So is that the first case then you ever won in your whole career? My first case. First, first win. Case. There you go. <laughs> Even as a non-attorney. As a non-attorney. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. We but, learned something But that just today. tells you. That just tells you sometimes landlords are not honest, but there's not a lot of them. Yeah, you know, I, I find one thing about taking someone's security deposit is if you don't put it in a separate kind of a trust account or a separate account, it stays there. And you put it into your own personal account, it gets used. Yes. You know, and certain landlords get in trouble out there. and They don't even have the money to give back. Those are those are not the landlords that we That That's want. a really, really good point because yeah. in most leases, it says that they don't have to put it in a trust account, that the landlord right. can put it in their general account. But I always say... Don't put it in your general account because when you need it, you know you may have spent it. Have it right. have it sitting back there in, right. the, in a bank in a bank right. deposit. Yeah, right. And don't don't let that. Uh, I don't have it. Make up excuses of why you're not going to give it. That that just it tells me if you're doing that, you're in the wrong business. Yeah, pretend it's, like you don't have it. Yeah, it's just not your money. You know the whole key is of security deposit, and I just heard Cincinnati now went to. You don't have to get, take a security deposit. You can get a security insurance policy, which is going to be interesting to see how that works out and how a landlord makes a claim. But the whole point for us is, listen, we want to get our property back in reasonable good condition because we got to turn it quickly. If I'm going to be a successful landlord, it can't sit there for a month or two, at, you know, especially if I have a mortgage on it, right, just costing me money. Yeah, landlords and, need to realize right. there will be some normal wear and tear. Right that the resident does not have right. to pay for out of the security deposit. Right. But the whole purpose for the $1,200 we talked about or the 500 or th- whatever your deposit is, isn't really the money. It's the motivation to have your tenant return the property to you in a satisfactory condition. And I say that because what happens is when you move out is you're so busy and worried about your new home and where your new couch is going to go and hanging those pictures and getting the kids to school. There's a lot to a move and where you're moving from often you're not paying attention to because all of your excitement is where you're going. And the only thing that keeps you focused on the place you're moving from is the $1,200 security deposit. So I love getting a security deposit. I just don't want our landlords to think that's their money or your good name. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and you know those tenants. Yeah, they've been there for a long time. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. You know, and, and the one thing about being a great landlord, and, and most people know this, is man, I get referral after referral. I've had tenants say, "Hey, I'm leaving, but my brother-in-law wants to take over right after me and take over the place, or family member, or a neighbor." I've had many of my tenants find my next, my next applicant. You know, because of of being just a good landlord. Um, so we talk, we talk about good landlords all the time. We understand that, you know, you get in situations where maybe you're not seen as a good landlord, even though you are by your tenants. And so, you know, there are times we get in tough situations and that's why we have attorneys and podcasts and that's why we, we do that. But overall, I think good hearts win the day being, doing the right thing. And B- bottom uh, line, don't mess with security deposits, yeah, do the right thing all the time. Yeah, I agree. So let's just recap real quick before we close down this podcast, document, either by a list with a video or by pictures or all three when your place is cleaned up and ready to rent to a new person. Make, make sure you keep all your receipts. Okay. Put that in a file electronically, Manila or whatever. Keep all your receipts so you can prove that it's new carpet. You can prove all the stuff that is in pristine condition. Let them move in. Okay. I would allow them and conv- and convince them, hey, take pictures of anything you see that you don't think is good. And it's kind of like renting a car and you walk around the car and you look for the little ding in the car and you want to say, hey, listen, you don't necessarily have to fix the ding before I take the Hertz rent a car, but I just want you to know I didn't do it. So if you walk around the house and you see anything, a little chipped countertop or something, that we're not going to come in and fully replace the countertop, but we'll just know you didn't do it. I recommend that you do that as a tenant. Absolutely. And then I'm going to come back and when you move out, we're going to do a walkthrough and we're going to take a list and we're going to take pictures and we're going to take a video again. And we're just going to make sure that we're all on the same page because every time I'm on the same page, 
with my tenant, it, it works out great. Yeah, and as a landlord, this is probably the most you have to do. This yeah. is the big thing. Yeah. Because what, what else do you do? Take a check, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, I say spend all the time getting the right applicant. So spend yes. all your time really going through that onboarding process. And part of this onboarding process is this move-in inspection. And then you're right. After that, you can almost put it on autopilot. Denny, thanks again. Appreciate your time. You're, you're just a fantastic friend. And, um, and just a wealth of knowledge, and I'm sure that our Ret Nation uh, really appreciates all the advice you give them. Until next time, continue to rent perfect. But if you like what you hear and you want to hear more, just go ahead and subscribe, and we'll hit your inbox and let you know every time we launch a new episode. And until then, rent perfect. <laughs>